Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail community news, through hiker update, and trail information. Well, at go, at code down at Amalco Falls State Park, which is the Appalachian Trail kickoff, should be winding down. Folks should have tent city should be up and gone. And uh, but I heard this weekend was a great weekend. It looks like there was a lot of folks down there. I had some people send me in some stuff down there from Tent City and telling me how all about it. So sorry I missed it this year. Uh, but uh, family uh, family things happen, you know, out here in the Matrix. Uh, fortunately, my son, he rarely ever comes to see us, but he came in and graced us with his presence. So that was cool to get to see him. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, also I had some other things going on that happened in my Matrix ego. So believe it or not, I'm building a chicken coop. So uh, I'll tell you about, uh, I got a video out why I'm off the deep end building a chicken coop. And uh, you can go to my other channel here. I'll leave a link to that at the at the end of this video if you want to check that out. But just a little bit about my Matrix ego. Uh, but in any case, you came here not to hear about me, but to hear about what's going on the Appalachian Trail load. So let's go ahead and get started. We've had some folks from the class of 2022 that have finished their hike. So congratulations to Diesel. She has finished her Sobo hike. That is awesome, Diesel. Uh, we got some updates from her and then some from some friends of hers throughout the course of her journey. So that was very nice to see her finally finish. Uh, her body was totally spent. She gave it 100, 110% and then some to make it through. But she finished, and that is awesome, Diesel. Very glad to he hear that. Just a huge congratulations out to her. And then Slug also finished. So Slug got the trail name because he's slow, but slow wins the race. He was out there for... 10 months and 10 days, I believe. And so that was really neat to see him finish. So congratulations to you, Slug. Uh, we've also got um, Turtleback. He is out there. He crossed over from, um, from North Carolina into Georgia. So he is on his last state and will be finishing up probably by this coming Friday. So excited to see him finish up. He's somebody else out there that's been updating us from time to time. And then a through hiker from last year, class 2022, she wanted to report in about some folks out there, and that's her name's Dandelion. She wanted to report in some folks out there. So Lady Slippers is on her flip-flop from 2022, and she had summoned it with uh, Dandelion and Katahdin and then headed south. And so she is supposed to be finishing up here uh, sometime in early May. So looking forward to that. And then Magical Woods, Woodchuck, he stepped off January 31st uh, and has made it to Gatlinburg. So it sounds like he's a through hiker, not specifically tracking him that I'm aware of. But in any case, he is all the way to Gatlinburg there. And she wanted to note that, uh, that Magical Woodchuck is special because he was a section hiker and he was with her and seven others that got stuck in the Derrick Knob shelter in a terrible blizzard uh, back last year. And they were stuck there, I think, for about three days. So the temps were bad for too bad for them to get out. But what was really bad is the snow drifts were so bad that they just could not make it, could not get out of there. So they were stuck there for like three days in sub-freezing temperatures. Uh, they, but they ate each other's food. They were smart. They stayed where they were at. You know, they would scout the trail out and see if you could see it, but the snow was all over the trees, so you couldn't see the blaze, couldn't see the trail because it was all drifted over, so they did the smart thing, stayed where there was at. They had the resources to do so. Uh, there was only one person there that had a cell signal, and that was Magical Woodchuck. So Magical Woodchuck was able to help them uh, maintain contact with the outside world, but maintain contact with their loved ones to let them know they were fine. Uh, they knew that eventually they would get out of there before their food resources went out, and they did. So that was awesome. So looking forward to uh, Magical Woodchuck, and maybe we'll get some more updates on uh, Woodchuck. Og has made it to Franklin and is on his way to the Knox. So Og's the first one I bring up because Og's a friend of mine from my hometown here, 
and so he is out there on the trail and so very interested to watch him uh, follow along and uh, and his he is on our support list and August is trail name on our support list so you can go and find that on our support list and that link is down below where you can go follow all of these hikers that I'm talking about now that are out there on the trail. Uh, Surefoot has made it through Rhone and got a selfie with the Overmountain Shelter before the ATC and the National Forest Service uh, and that trail club in there decide they want to destroy it and push it over and pile it up and whatever they plan to do with it there. So, uh, but appreciate you sending that in. So at least we can all get one last look at that piece of Americana, that peak of, piece of hiker history that folks, uh, including myself, have uh, come to know over the years, provided shelter for us and uh, something that is near and dear to our heart. Other folks have uh, said, hey, we'll put some money forward. Let's fix it. It's fixable. Believe me, if the Leaning Tower of Pisa can be fixed, then this leaning over mountain shelter can be fixed, but that's neither here nor there because the ATC and the National Forest Service uh, and the local club there are going to rip it down. So, any case, thanks a lot for sending that in, Surefoot. Uh, Susie and Sassafash Jim, they have passed from Georgia into North Carolina, and they should be in Franklin right now. Sassafash Jim uh, is hiking with his wife's uh, ashes, I presume, uh, Susie was uh, his wife that passed away recently, and so he has taken uh, her with him all the way throughout his hike, and so they are doing that together. And Sassafras Jim, I reported last week that he changed his name to trail name of Bear Spray because he let loose his bear spray in the above the clouds hostel and filled that place up full of bear spray. Uh, so they named him Bear Spray down there, but he got to thinking about it and some other folks on the trail got to talking to him about it and uh, because he started this with Susie and I think Susie had given him that trail name then that's what he wanted to stick with was Sassafras Jim. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so he does report that the privy levels are fine as he's coming up and uh, and so he is looking forward just to continuing his own hike and should be in Franklin by now and maybe even on his way to the knock. Diamond Swan, he has made it to North Carolina. He should be in Franklin by now. Flatlander has made it on the trail. Brent Larson has gotten on trail. Grizz, he should be in Franklin, and he cautioned all hikers about getting dehydrated. So make sure you carry enough water, but more importantly, and there should be plenty of water sources out there on the trail, more importantly, drink your water. Uh, so he apparently had a little bout of dehydration at uh, one of the hostels, and uh, they helped him out there, and so he is continuing the mission, uh, but he's doing fine now. Uh, Yolo, he has made it to Hot Springs. Greyhound and Bell Out, they are back on the trail, and they should be in North Carolina any day now. Ablis and Iris and the Fabulous Firsties, who you uh, know are a class. She's a teacher. Iris is a class, and the Fabulous Firsties are her students, and they are a class that is virtually hiking uh, the Appalachian Trail. So Iris is using all things about the Appalachian Trail to teach them everything from math to grammar to map reading, you name it, she's giving them practical skills, give them the skills that they need that her school system requires her to give them, but more importantly, she is bringing up the next hiker generation. So that's awesome. They are all into it. The hiker community has embraced it because just she tells me every week about how uh, folks have just sent her all type of trail magic from stickers to pencils to uh, just all the food, just you name it. The hiker community has embraced that class and if you want to do that, that her link to do that is down below as well, where you can send her stuff. Uh, right now, they have passed the halfway mark, so they all got to celebrate with a cup of ice cream, just like they didn't drink, they didn't, they didn't all eat a quarter ice cream, but they did get to celebrate with ice cream at the halfway point, like uh, through hikers do. Uh, and she says they don't know it yet, but when they get to virtually get to Connecticut, that uh, some amazing trail angel, trail angels have sent them some t-shirts. Uh, ATC, AT t-shirts uh, from Connecticut. So that is awesome. Looking forward to them getting that. Uh, we hadn't had a lot of pictures of that, and that's because she would, they're, they're uh, you know, children, and so she would have to get some type of release form, and her administration would probably frown on that. But it has been awesome for her to follow along and us to be able to hear about that. Peter and Churchill, they have made it to Hot Springs, and they are on their way to Irwin. Uh, he asked about a resupply 
going to Irwin and said and made the comment that Irwin's about 75 or 70 miles away uh, from where he's at there at Hot Springs, and they're only doing, I say only, they're, they're doing, it doesn't matter how many miles you do a day, but they're doing 10 miles a, a day. And so that means he's got to carry about seven days' worth of food. Uh, and he asked the question, do people carry seven days worth of food or what do they do? So, you know, my comment to him was by the time you get to Hot Springs, a lot of people are doing more miles than that, but not necessarily. So if it's 70 miles, of course, you're going to fill yourself up and really camel up and eat up that first day. That'll get you through those first 10 miles. And then the last 10 miles will, will be coming into Irwin. So you'll get good food there. So that gets you down to 50 miles. You have to carry food or five days worth. So you could probably get by with that. But he was more concerned about resupply and how to resupply through that area. So if anybody out there has got a comment, maybe share with him. Leave that uh, down in the comment section and uh, help a hiker out. And just let him know. If you're doing low miles, how, what, did you carry your food the whole way or did you have some resupply or some other thing that you were doing there? Uh, Bubbles have made it to North Carolina and should be coming into the knock any day now. Popcorn has made it to Franklin and judging by the size of this mug, I hope he didn't get caught in the Franklin vortex there at this, uh, at the Lazy Hiker Bar uh, because uh, if he had more than one mug, he may still be there. Adam, Cat, Addy, and Compact, they are on their way to Dix Creek Gap. Might be standing around the Bend Hostel there. They got a refit for shoes there. Cat's feet were killing her. So they got a refit, new shoes at Neil's Gap. So hopefully that will get them there, the Neil's Gap, and those will work out for them. Uh, Laura has made it to the trail, and she may be close to Dix Creek Gap as well. Corey has stepped off on his hike and went back to the park to hook up with another hiker there uh, that he was going to hike with and wound up there in a tornado warning this weekend. So apparently they all had to evacuate and go down into to the basement of the lodge down there that they had a tornado warning for Amicola Falls State Park during ADCO weekend. And, and I also heard that some folks from the lodge could actually see that tornado. The lodge is up on a hill, so if you could see that coming and, and it kind of, uh, the overlook is looking south, southwest, so you could very well see that coming up. So that would have been interesting if anybody out there got a picture of that. Uh, Mule and AOG, they have made it to Gatlinburg in the Smokies, uh, and they say they were in fantastic shape and a great mindset. Uh, Erwin Newmar and his wife from Austria, they have made it to Franklin. So always neat to hear from international folks out there. Oz and Thumper, they got started today, uh, or it may have been yesterday, at 9 a.m. from uh, Springer Mountain. So Oz plans to do the hike in, uh, in 100 days. So Oz has uh, made a couple attempts, and then uh, he uh, wasn't successful at those. And then he had to take a couple years off where he couldn't come back because he's from uh, Canada. He's Canadian, so I call it Canada. It's actually Canada, but I call it Canada. But anyway, he um, couldn't come back because of COVID, couldn't get across the border. So finally he's across the border now, and his hiking buddy Thumper, who always hikes with him, uh, they got started, and they were number – 795 is what they were so that is uh, so we are probably by now we are over 800 people that have started their hike but he plans to do the trail in 100 days he plans to be to Irwin Tennessee in 16 to 7 days so that's 344 trail miles from Springer that's going to put him at 20 miles per day coming off the couch so and he's not actually coming off the couch because if, if you follow his channel and he does it's called Oz the hiking sailor uh, and he's a veteran uh, of the Canadian Navy. And so he, uh, he he spends a lot of time hiking, a lot of time hiking in the cold, of course, in, uh, in Canada up north. So hopefully he'll be able to do that, but 20 miles a day for 2,000, what is it, 194 this year, that is a lot of miles. So good luck to him. That is a very ambitious goal for him to do that. Uh, if, um, if you didn't find that, uh, you don't um, – that that if you can't find that channel that link there's a link to it down in uh, uh, down on my support list. Jersey Redneck he has made it to way a bald. First grader has reached the cheese factory. Frodo who's carrying the ring from Mordor he has arrived at the knock. Snow Bear he's made it to Franklin. Coda got started with a 20 pound bag and that includes food and water. 
and he indicated the ATC were a little upset with him because he was so low. Uh, so, uh, you know, I asked him, what did they suggest you do, put an anvil in your bag? So, uh, and said that facetiously, not throwing any shade at the, at the, at the volunteers down there uh, at Amicola Falls State Park. Um, they may carry an ATC patch on their shoulder, but they're really good people. Uh, they are, most of them are volunteers for the Georgia uh, Appalachian Trail Club maintainers through there. Uh, I know at least one of them just from social media and we correspond occasionally. So they really only had his best intentions in mind. Uh, they do get concerned when people carry too little or too much. Uh, but uh, Coda in, Cody indicated that uh, he was already past mountains uh, or mountains crossing there at Neal's Gap and he's doing fine not wanting for anything, didn't need food, water, nothing. And so uh, he's in good shape. So folks there at Amicoff Falls State Park where you're checking people in, Cody's doing great. Uh, but those are good people there and they mean well. And so certainly don't want to say anything disparage about them. Appreciate everything that they do for the hikers down there and for the trails down in Georgia. That is a thankless task. Hiram Hikes, he is north of Irwin. Jonathan is north of Unicoi Gap. Roll Tide, who is our Great Smoky Mountains National Park correspondent, he's he is an actual employee of ATC, and he's actually a friend of mine, believe it or not, and somebody that uh, that I appreciate very much, and despite his employer, and but he is working as a ridge runner there in the Smokies, and so uh, he has not had to cite anybody or arrest anybody yet. I don't think he even has the power of arrest as a ridge runner. I'm sure he doesn't, but he hadn't had to cite anybody. Uh, for doing their YouTube videos up there. You know, there's been a bunch of junk going around about uh, the National Park Service now has deemed that if you're a YouTuber that you can be fined for not having a permit. So he's not doing any of that or hadn't had to do it so far. Uh, and that he says there is a ton of through hikers that have come through, uh, but that uh, he's enjoying that. Um, he was uh, up in the Whites and served there as one of the site custodians up there or, or that's probably the wrong word there but he was the person that was in charge of the site up there helping hikers and that was a nom intent site so did a fabulous job of updating us there so looking forward to his updates down here wedge and his family they are making great time they sent this picture in before they hit the smoky so it looks like they are having a ball there get them some town food in fontana uh, and pictured here, we got Lane, Flying J, Wedge, Mary Poppins, Trash Hiker, Lost and Found, Liz, who's from England, and Popcorn. So uh, they should be somewhere in the Smokies now. McDuck, he's made it to Neil Gap, and he said when he left this week, the pack weights were averaged around 32 pounds, with the high being 42 and the low being 22. Noni, she is in the Smokies. Mark and Anita, they've reached the North Carolina border. And Anita has gotten the trail name of Mama Nita. That's a mouthful. That's three syllables. But in any case, uh, that's her trail name. So we're waiting on Mark to get his trail name. Leo Beggs, and I think I pronounced his name right, he has gotten the trail name of Trail Brain for being kind of leaving stuff around, scatterbrain, what have you. But he's been given Trail Brain as his trail name, and he is north of Unicoi Gap. Magpie, Polar Plunge, Polar Plunge, Moo, they have all left Neil Gap, and they are part of the Geriatric Club. So it's pretty neat to be following them. They are a little older in, to in the tooth than typical hikers out there, so it's going to be neat to follow them and uh, look for their success along the trail. Uh, also heard from a subscriber that uh, so one of the hikers had gotten off the trail in the uh, Couch to Trail team. Uh, Renee is now out there alone or with other hikers, presumably. Uh, Eddie Kahn, he had gotten off just because he determined that through hiking was not his thing, and that's fine. Uh, that happens to people all the time, and better to do it now than to stay out there and be miserable. So, um, so congratulations to all those folks that are out there on the trail. Great to hear from you. Uh, if you want to update me, then you can go to any of my uh, DMs down below or my email and send those to me. Thursday or Friday is the best day to send it to me, so the news will be fresh. And also I script typically on Saturday and film on Sunday. So those are the best days to send it to me. So through hikers that we've got started that are on my list, uh, 
that are on my support list uh, coming up for this coming week. Oz has already got started. Mike Adams, Joseph Caldwell, Frostbite, Eva Diamond, BB and his dog Ronan, Mason Blair, uh, Nikki, also known as 32 Feet Up, Picnic, Shutterbug, Deborah Hammond, Pink Fox, Lighthouse, Kentucky Fried, Deb Hammond, Onyx, Chef, Batman Hiking, and his companion is Robin, Jeffrey, Viger, and B Sweet, Pell Rider, Ben Towel, Alley 45, and Puffin. So all those folks are on uh, my support list, have social media. You can go and find that down below. Uh, you'll find that link to that. If And the best thing that you can do if you're part of the hiker community is go and subscribe to all those folks, whether they be YouTube or Instagram or trail journals, and go and send them out of boys and out of girls and out of hikers, whatever you want to send them. Keep them pumped up all the way throughout the course of their hike. And uh, if you're a through hiker and you want to be on it, that link is down below where you can go and fill that form out and populate yourself to that. So looking forward to that. We've got somewhere around 220 folks that are on that list right now. So a lot of folks you can go out there and follow. So registrations, what's happening with that right now, looks like we are at the peak of the bubble. Somewhere the peak of the bubble is between this year, between February 28th and April 4th. Uh, but before it starts to slack off and wane just a little bit there. But uh, the so what that means is from now until April 4th and even beyond that, uh, if you need to get off trail for bad weather or what have you, hostels are going to be full, particularly around those things like bad weather that pull everybody off the trail. So you need to get off sooner than rather than later. You need to make your reservations earlier if those hostels will take reservations instead of first come, first served, otherwise get there first. Uh, tr shelters will be full. People will be beating feet to get to the shelter. So uh, take all that into account, and that's going to occur as the bubble moves on up the trail well into Virginia. It's going to be like that. Now the bubble will start spreading out. Get a little easier, but still, while the bubble is still there before it starts petering out, unless people get off of it and more of it gets elongated, it's going to be tough to find hostels to get off during inclement weather right there in the middle. Uh, we are maxed out right now for six days that are on the trail, max being more than 50 hikers that are registered and leaving on any particular day. Uh, that's compared to last year when we had 23 days of maxed out days um, of registration. So registrations, of course, I've been saying all along are down a little bit from last year, uh, but I am hearing from trail angels and stuff out there that it seems like more people started earlier this year than they did last year. Uh, so trail angels are saying they're having bigger crowds earlier this year. Uh, Fresh ground, he kind of tries to stay in front of the bubble a little bit. He, he can't feed 20, 30, 60 people at a time. So he kind of tries to stay in front of the bubble just a little bit. So I'm getting that information from him as well. Uh, and then here's like two different scales you can see from last year. So this is 2022 of the registrations, and this is 2023. So you can see where there's a whole lot more people in 2022, but it seems the bubble has shifted uh, backwards a little bit to an earlier date in 2023 this year. Of course, these are two different scales. One of them stop, tops out at 70, the other at 80. I don't know why the ATC and consistent have the same scale for all of them, but you know they're not usually consistent about much of nothing, so it doesn't surprise me there. Uh, but in any case, this does give you a good indication of where things are compared to last year. And without doing you know really like a lot of number crunching here, it does look like the start dates have moved earlier uh, for more people. So uh, right now, before, like I said, we are somewhere over 800 people that have stepped off and registrations are on Nobo or up 98 hikers from last week. So we've had a total of 2,658 Nobos that have registered. Flip floppers up about four, we're around 155. And Sobo, uh, we're around 103, which is up five from last week. So total, we're up 107 new registrations from last week. Right now we're looking at 2,916 hikers that have registered and that's across the board, Nobo, Sobo, Flip Floppers, 
for their hike this year. Looks like it's going to be a busy year, but not quite as busy as it has been in previous years. So some news coming up, but before I give the news, I wanted to give a shout out and support that I have been getting lately. And uh, it's just awesome the support I get from the hiker community. You know, your subscriptions and your comments and your thumbs up, they mean a lot. They really help out. They help me out just to keep doing what I do here. Uh, for this every week and to help me get out there amongst the hyper community but uh, I also have a patreon account and I've had several people new people that have joined uh, my patreon as a patreon over the past couple weeks so I want to give a shout out to Gerald DeMasters thanks a lot Gerald also man down and Tuesday thank y'all for doing that Karen Delos Santos and she also has a YouTube channel. Her and her daughter get out and hike, and hike a lot, and it is Wildflowers Adventures. I'll leave a link to that down below so you can go and check out her YouTube channel. And then Random Adventures, let me see if I can do this, 2.0. So he's got a YouTube channel. He's got a lot of interesting stuff on that. I'll leave that down below. But all those folks, thanks a lot for joining and becoming a patreon of my channel that just means so much to me and then i also had a super thanks from uh mylan and i'm going to screw this up and i'm sorry mylan bunsick so thanks a lot for that super thanks i those are just awesome to get those when i do it just means that i'm vilifies what i'm doing i'm doing the right thing and you guys are just the best and and just keep me doing what i'm doing so thanks a lot for that so some news we got going out there i did some follow-up uh, on the burns with the uh, National Forest Service and the posting that they do. You know, we talked about the last two weeks that there's some burns coming up that are going to affect the Appalachian Trail and in the southern section of the Appalachian Trail. So they'll be coming up here soon. And how the National Forest Service doesn't give you a date. Uh, to some extent, it's difficult to give you a date because, uh, you know, it's weather dependent. However, they have a window of when they're going to be doing it. So they don't give us a window. You know, they have to get crews and stuff in here. They don't tell us when they're going to do that. Uh, and the best they can do is they, the day of the burn, they post it on a tree. I hope they don't use nails. Uh, or they put it on their, and or they put it on their social media and their accounts. And I don't know a lot of people who subscribe to the National Forest uh, Service. And uh, I don't know, a lot of times those listings are old they say they also tell the atc but those listings are old if you ever go through and look at the updates some of them are about bear encounters from two years ago so you can't really count on that either but the atc is supposed to send out a text about trail closures and other alerts are on the trail so uh, i don't know if we've had any this year because they don't send them to me i'm not a through hiker uh, when you register your through hike then one of the things you could do is ask for those alerts to be sent to your text or email. So if you're a through hiker and you registered for that, let me know if you've received any text at all or any alerts at all. I'd be interested to know if that system is up and running or if it's not. Also contacted the National Forest Service and the National Forest Service about the burns, you know, asking what do people do? I mean, they shut the trail down, so you get to a tree and bam, the trail shut down. What do you do? Well, the National Forest Service claims that they work with the ATC and trail clubs, and trail clubs will give you, will provide shuttles to get people around those burn areas. Well, I have talked to two different trail clubs because those were the two trails uh, or two sections of the ATC that I was aware of that are going to be affected, and both trail clubs said, Bang! no, we do not give shuttles around that. We don't do that. We don't have the resource to do that, and, uh, and so people have to get their own shuttles through the shuttle system that's out there. So I talked to the uh, Mount Rogers ATC Club and PATH, which is the Piedmont Appalachian Trail Hikers who maintain a section there in Southern Virginia. So neither one of those are, are going to give people shuttle rides around those burns. So National Forest Service is incorrect about that. Don't know why they have that information. Put that out there, but that is incorrect. And then wind up who's a subscriber. He sent some stuff up here from ADCO or sent some pictures to me from ADCO. So it looked like things were going great there. He did give me a shot of the visitor center and then what the arch looks like for you folks that got there yet. So visitor center was supposed to be done in either March or May. Uh, don't look like it's going to be done to the fall here because I don't even think they got it in the dry. But Tent City, it looks like it looked like it was a happening place there. 
Uh, and uh, so sorry I missed that this year. So some other news, the Lick Creek Bridge is going to be rebuilt. So Lick Creek Bridge is a, a river crossing or a big, huge creek crossing right before you get to the up that starts up to Chestnut Knob Shelter. Uh, so it's on the northern section of the Mount Rogers uh, area, north of the Partnership Shelter. So uh, when you come to that area right now, it's a ford, so you have to wade across there. Sometimes it's just up to your ankles or knees. Sometimes uh, it's a really difficult ford, depending on how much rain they've had. They've got a rope that goes up across there that you can hold on the rope to get across. Uh, here's what the Lick Creek Bridge looks like now. It was washed out, I think, in 2020 and has been up against the bank ever since then. Since then. But... Uh, according to the site that I found, the Forest Service and the ATC, they've done something good, and I'm giving, I'm giving them kudos for that. So where, where they do something good, I, I want to give them kudos on that. They've partnered with the Federal Highway Administration, and they're going to design and reconstruct a replacement for the Lake Creek footbridge as part of the National Transportation Infrastructure program and that was a bill that went through Congress that was billions of dollars uh, and uh, going to keep politics out of it at least though uh, hiking community is getting a piece of that and that's supposed to be redone it's supposed to be done this year their site says it's going to be done sometime in the spring so we'll see hopefully it's not exactly the same type of bridge because it flooded before so you know fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on you on you on me, that's how, that's how it goes, yeah. Anyway, hopefully they'll elevate that thing and get it above the floodplain, uh, and that'll take care of it and won't have any more washouts through there, and it won't be a Ford uh, for the near future. And then Bear, who was a previous hiker from last year, 2022, uh, he got so much out of what the hiker community did for him all the way up the trail and just talking on, the, you know, keeping him pumped up uh, through social media, that he wanted to get back to it. And so he has started a channel that is focused on hikers that are coming through. So apparently he's working at Around the Bend Hostel there at Dix Creek Gap. He's working with them. But while he's working with them, he's interviewing hikers that have made it that far, and he's wanting to get their perspective. So by now you've been on the trail probably for um, getting close to a week now. Some people may be longer than that. Uh, but by now you've been on the trail for enough time to know, get a perspective of what it's like, realizing that nothing dries out. You have to deal with being cold and wet all the time. Nothing dries out. You're going to get wet. That's just a fact of life. You're going to get dirty, stinky. That's the way it is. But perspective from hikers that are there. So I think that is really neat. Uh, you know, get their attitudes, their feelings of what's going on. I'll leave that uh, link to his YouTube channel down below, but go and check that out, particularly if you're a through hiker coming up uh, or, or if you're a through hiker from uh, years gone by. I'd love to know what your perspective was. If it, you know, how when you got to that point, did you feel the same way and how that changed throughout the course of your hike? Greg Patterson and his PT folks, his PT students, they are at Neil's Gap. And they're at Mountains Crossing helping hikers out, and they'll be doing that for the next four weeks. So appreciate them doing that. And also my church link for, uh, for churches that are on the trail, anywhere on the trail that want to welcome hikers in, uh, to sign up for that, to give them rides, to maybe give them showers, help them with uh, resupply, maybe give them a place to pitch their tent. Uh, if you're a church that wants to do that and, and welcome hikers into uh, your services so that they can attend services, those that want to, as they hike through. There's a form down below. That link's down below. Please fill that out. Uh, I, have I have only had like two churches that do that. Two people all together have done that. That is very disconcerting. I'm a Christian. Of, of course, this is open to anybody, um, Protestant, Catholic, Jewish. It doesn't matter. It's open to everybody because we all, hikers come from all walks of life. But I would hope that more than just two churches would welcome people in. And so I'm a little disappointed in that. And, and if it doesn't, uh, if I don't get more people on it and it doesn't take off, then I'm just going to take it down because it's kind of pointless for me to keep mentioning it every week. So hopefully churches out there will step up uh, and, uh, and will put yourself on that list. Uh, don't mean to end on a bad note, folks. 
great weather coming up. Uh, it's going to be a good hiking week. Later in the week, some rain's coming through. But anyway, looking forward to hearing from all your hikers. Send me your update. And as always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.